What is good? We have a 2024 startup mock with rookies. <laughs> Super flex start and pre- tight end premium. Third round reversal. Got to. Love Gladiators it. ready. Love that third round reversal. We got all super flex. Sure, and super flex. Tight end premium. Third round reversal. Like it. Seems to even up the playing field a little bit. Austin, how you doing? Yo, what's up, fellas? How's it going? Good, good. Got Austin in the uh, in the tiny box. Off to your left. Uh huh. Ready to roll. <laughs> Um, usually we like to compare our mocks to recent mocks that we've done, but Sleeper has snatched all of our mocks up and they have disappeared into the ether, so we will be starting fresh today. Um, we'll take you through this mock. We'll tell you what we liked, what we didn't like, good value, bad value, we'll talk about our teams and how they're constructed uh, near the end. Like I mentioned, this mock does contain rookies, um, and while we will touch on them, uh, in this video, we will be doing a separate video where we dive a bit deeper into them and the surrounding players and their value. Uh, so be sure to like, subscribe to the channel and the pod so you don't miss any of that. With that being said, if you're listening on the podcast, you know we're going to try to keep you abreast of the uh, situation here as it unfolds, but sometimes it, I'm sure it can get a little confusing. So if you go over to YouTube and get a screenshot of the draft and see see for yourself if you'd like to look at it while you follow along. Right. Go ahead and uh, subscribe while you're there, you know? Do it. All right. So, right off the rip, our guy Austin's got the 1-1. He goes He goes. Josh Allen. Then we got Mahomes. Then we got Hurts. Then we got Lamar. Then we got Joe Burrow. We got Chase, which mm, maybe that should be Justin Jefferson um, if you're going to receiver there. But yeah, got to hey, be. You know, preference. Justin Herbie. Uh, you know, maybe some people are upset about that now. And then Trevor Lawrence at 8. There's no way that could be happening at this point. CJ Stroud at 9. Caleb Williams at 110, Anthony Richardson at 111, and Justin Jefferson to round it out at 112. And real quick, just for the uh, viewers on YouTube, uh, what you're seeing in the bottom left hand of the screen is all the rookies, what pick they went in this mock, and then what that would correlate to in a rookie draft. So that's like see, the first see. 12 picks of a rookie mock. So we got that over there for your pleasure. You know, like I said, right off the rip, I think you got to go Stroud over T-Law. Um, at this point, probably even Anthony Richardson over T-Law for my liking. T-Law maybe bumps down to, to like a 2-1 to 2-4, to 2-5 two 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 area here. I would take T-Law over two, I think, still. But Kyler starts to get a little, eh, maybe, maybe Kyler. They, they add another big-time receiver down there in, um, in Arizona. I like, I like the way things are progressing in Arizona. Austin, what's your thoughts on, on Trevor moving forward? Seems to be a topic of conversation right now. I'm definitely in on Trevor. Like, I, sure, I'm worried with what I've seen recently. I believe in him long term. Um, Jacksonville's a little bit in a funk, and it's funny because they're still in first place in the AFC South. Uh, but man, it's. A, I guess we wanted to see quicker results out of Trevor after such a you know a brutal rookie campaign. Then he improved his sophomore season, and now we're kind of back to just being frustrated. So, yes, I'm still in. But man, I, I absolutely would like to see more. You see Christian Kirk go down and. Oh my God! Like that, that absolutely affected Trevor more than anything. Yeah, I mean, Trevor's got some work to do. Like, there's some inexcusable mistakes that he that he mm-hmm. makes from time to time. I mean, he's still he's still really young, and he still can make every throw in the book. And he, I mean, he, he's played pretty well overall. There's been a lot of drop touchdowns and a lot of injuries that he's dealt with. He was they were balling with Zay Jones out there. Zay Jones went out for a while. Zay Jones was back. Christian Kirk's out, you know, Jones Evan Ingram's still hurt it. and his back out. So right. He wasn't right. Yeah. I think they got a little away from the run because every time he touched the ball, it looked good. The narrative, everybody watching him, that game, that fumble, that mismanagement of the clock at the you end. You catch that primetime game where everybody's watching and, and it compounds a little more. It seems. It, yeah. So I, I think there's probably a, a discount here on some Trevor and I, I'm in, man. I, I'm still in. There's there's plays and throws that he makes that are just like incredible. And if he can stop with, if he cannot lead the league in goddamn fumbles, self inflicted fumbles, it didn't, no one even touched right. him, you know. And 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 I'm mad, but like I'm not gonna just write him off because of those series of events that you know were really bad and close together and ended up in them losing the game big time. Uh, when it when it was mu- it was more of a, it was much more of a close game than the final score is indicative, but indicative of. 
but uh, I think I still I can't I can't bail on Trevor. I'm glad that Austin led with that because I went I went to Clemson, so take this all with a grain of salt. But <laughs> right, so this is you know, and there's another good point in here about knowing your league. So you got a Clemson guy, you know, he's going to give Trevor a little bit more of the benefit of the doubt. I, I'm I'm still fine with Trevor. I'm with kind of everybody here. We want to see results faster. You're seeing CJ uh, Stroud kind of elevate everybody around him, and I think that's. A little bit of what we're, you know, we saw it happening with Lawrence last year. And, you know, let's not get it twisted. The Jags have been a, a pretty bad franchise for for most of our lives. And, you know, I can remember a few times in their inception of being good. And then a couple of times with Bordelais and, uh, and, and Lenny being good. But, you know, it's been it's been pretty, pretty poor over there. And now, you know, you're down Christian Kirk. You're down Zay Jones. Uh, your offensive line is, is kind of average. I saw Jordan McNamara, I think his name is, compare him to Derek Carr today on Twitter. I thought that was that was pretty egregious. He, That's insulting. He seems to like to do stuff for clicks. It seems like that was pretty clicky. Um, that's but, insulting. You know, I, I, I think that's a little bit silly. Trevor's played a whole lot better and had, has a, just a, has shown to have a much higher ceiling uh, than, than Derek Carr um, kind of ever would possess. I think Derek Carr can be fine, uh, but I think Trevor Lawrence's baseline can be fine. Um, you know, so... Trevor's got a playoff win and uh, Derek Carr doesn't. He's been in the league for a decade. So, yeah. Um, and Trevor, you know, for the, for, for what it is, has, has resurrected that, that franchise. Um, yes. He's doing some of these little things that, that we get on some other guys, Justin Fields, you know, you gotta, you gotta make the, the, the short little easy things look easy. And there's a few times in there that he makes those things look a little harder than they can. And then he does the wow stuff. You know, I think we were just hoping Trevor would make a bigger step forward this year. And it's kind of just stayed eh. and he also has in, you know, throughout the season had some drops and Calvin Ridley has led the league in DPIs. He's had some things that could, could make his overall fantasy ceiling look a little better right now I've, i know for sure i've seen a handful of touchdowns drop and that's you know you could probably add 24 points to trevor lawrence's over i mean to play that game is dangerous but like mm. you know good balls and whatnot so good um ball. <laughs> good hair anyway i don't know if the balls are good strong um, hair so anyway let's keep it moving here uh let's let's get to that second round we got Bijan, cd lamb kyler murray tua AJ Brown, Brees Hall, Fields at 27, Prescott at 28, uh Drake May at 29, Amon Ra at 210, Garrett at 211 and CMC at 212. Is there any anything you really liked in the second round or anything you find egregious in the second round, Austin? Oh man, taking Drake May over even Amon Ross St. Brown and Garrett Wilson doesn't sit right with me. Mm. Um, I think I'm getting a little bit lower on Drake May the more that I've watch the film the more that i've dug into him and and by no means am i off of drake may it's just uh this feels a little i don't know man i I just i guess i am pretty low on drake may the more that i think about it Mm. um these are two quality wide receivers i really like i think they're going to be you know valuable assets for your dynasty roster for the foreseeable future and um you know i would yeah yeah i i would just i would rather these guys over drake may like this isn't the worst thing i've ever seen it's just this isn't something that i would recommend doing yeah um i'm 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 okay with it uh we just we have a we have a quarterback issue right now in the league of elite players um mm-hmm. at that position so I'm, I'm okay with with taking that shot there um he does have lamar jackson already um uh, but you know I'm, I'm okay with doubling down there uh, i would have maybe taken one a little sooner than when he did another one after that but um i don't i don't hate it too much really i don't i don't have too many problems in the second round i mean you got jay wayne over there got jefferson and Bijan to, to start off with i like that start i mean maybe some people are down on Bijan, but i'm good cd oh. cd over aj brown i mean pick your poison Dak still getting a little discount but up from the last one we did i know just because even though sleeper took it from us i remember him being a little lower uh, well, so, so if, Dak on a bounce back a little bit here i think right, i'd well, swap then, then, then he went down to the bills you right know? <laughs> but whatever i'm I, still shown good that he that he deserves to be kind of up up where he is he showed you that there was a big ceiling there i'd, I'd probably take Dak over to uh and i'd probably slide fields down a bit further for me um, not because I don't think he can score fantasy points because, I, you know, I think he's probably going to go to his second team. And then after that second team, if it doesn't go well, your leash becomes shorter and shorter. So your long term fantasy outlook for Justin Fields just gets a little bit bleaker, just not because he can't score fantasy points, just because 
you know, if it doesn't go well for whatever reason on his next stop, you could be waiting for a third opportunity on a third team. Um, not to say that it couldn't happen any, or that he'll go to a second team and be awesome. I'm rooting for the kid. Um, but just like we talked about Lawrence, I think he makes a lot of the really easy things look really hard a lot of the time. Trevor is coaching, a, taking a team and and you know, maybe not elevating it to new heights, but you know they're in a little bit of a funk, like you said. And it, but is elevating that team to wins where Fields, you know, sometimes isn't necessarily the the reason that 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 teams are winning, and sometimes are, are this is the reason that they that they lost. Now this this past week seemed like he could have put him in a position to win, had some drops uh, from his guys, but uh, still I think there's a lot uh, to be desired for for Fields. So I'd I'd probably knock him down a little there. Speaking of drops, that fumble where Trevor just coughed it up, was on third and 17. On second and 17, Parker Washington T-Rexed a ball that would have been a first down. <laughs> yeah. and, you know, it's like crazy. If he had just caught that ball. Who knows what happens. Right. You know, obviously, the end of the half is on Trevor. You can't do that. Uh, but uh, that was anyway. a play call. Yeah, you can't throw the ball. You got to throw it through the end zone and yeah. take a field goal. All right, let's let's uh, let's keep it moving here. Third round, um, we're going to kick off with uh, your boy, Marvin Harrison Jr. goes, so we can rest easy there. This is the reversal. We got Tyreek, um, JT, Jordan, or uh, Jonathan Taylor, then, Jam- uh, then Gibbs, then Waddle, then Olave, then Hachain, um, <laughs> then Brock Purdy, baby, getting some respect, then TJ Hawkinson, this is tight end premium, so he's the first tight end off the board, E.T., Deshaun Watson and Kenny three sticks from your boy Austin Abbott. So you're doubling down on on running backs yeah. right there. It's yeah, I, you know I, I had nine baby. <laughs> I had the approach of I kind of wanted to go win now with with this team, right? I wanted to get a little aggressive and just build. Uh, I, you know, I don't want to spoil anything for the people that are listening on the podcast because I took some other players that are definitely older assets that would also help me win now. Um, with that being said, man, I, I do love pair Christian McCaffrey and Ken Walker. I'm a big Ken Walker fan. I know you guys are too. Mm-hmm. So, uh, lo- love, love a- anytime I can get a but, share. Uh, <laughs> he yeah, me. I know. I he know. I know. Me, Cause he's man. so dirty. He's so <laughs> dirty. Like you, you can't look down cause you thought he got tackled cause he might not have gotten tackled cause he breaks so many tackles. The dude is filthy. What a stud. Yeah. And can catch yeah. too. Shout out to all the stupid people. There's like, he can't catch. <laughs> no, I'm, I, dude, Get I'm, I, I'm a big fan. I'm a big fan of Ken Walker. It's hard not to be, man. Yeah. But, uh, I, you know, it was really interesting to see TJ Hawkinson as the first tight end. I don't want to say it was necessarily surprising, but, you know, now we got like four or five guys in the conversation. Mm-hmm. You know, we have. Uh, love it. I kind of I kind of expected Andrews to go first, but I, you know I love anytime there's a change. Uh, I wasn't sure if Laporta was going to be the first tight end off the board, dude. Even like Trey McBride, you can make an argument like he is up there. He's he's almost in that conversation. I think. I think so. Hey, dude, Trey's filthy too. Just make a ridiculous mm-hmm. catches. A go to player. Yeah, you're welcome. Yeah, y'all are welcome. You heard it here. Over and first. over and over and first. over and over first. And over and in a motherfucker's over and face over again. <laughs> so yeah so then then we're back into the fourth round here and any, any egregious picks in the third round brock purdy for mvp and at, at three eight <laughs> baby let's go i don't like it because he already had two i don't necessarily like that I, would, Mike, I don't think i would have done that loading Mike. up with three i was a little salty i want to see where purdy fell I, a lot of times in these mocks i don't well these first three picks pretty much but like I like to, I don't like to see where the guys that I might take are going to fall. You know, and yeah. a lot of times they go like right after I don't take. Them, I'll so do like, that okay. a lot, and then some if they slide, it's like you know I think yeah. I think I got Kyron in this draft where I ended up getting him. I was looking at him two rounds earlier, and then eventually I was like, I just got to take him because well, he's way too down far in the in the ADP. Right, for sleeper which doesn't is, have updated ADP. Which is some so. of the issues with some of these guys, and with some of the rookies, I do want to point out that I think some of them would go, but if they were if the name was there for a right. lot of these people were using see kickers that name, so you can. You know, we put them in there for you. Right. I did the I we, did the editing so you could see what player it is, but it's really everybody's picked a kicker right. and put the who that was in the, in the string because Sleeper doesn't have rookies yet. Come on, Sleeper. So when we do the draft, you got to think of the rookie that you want there. So I think some, you know, you, there could be some changes in there. And like you said, Puka for a while, Nico, and, Nico and, and Kyron, down. they're all a little down. So you have to know who you want on some of those guys and go searching for them. So anyway, you know, I don't, I don't really have any problems here. If you if you want to take Gibbs over Taylor, fine. I think that's, you know, I think you're I think I'm OK with that. I took Taylor. I'd be fine with swapping with Gibbs. It was kind of like, all right, let's see where the Gibbs love is right now. Um, I could have been OK with letting either one of those guys slide and see where they go. It's a mock. I do like to do that a lot. Um, 
Hachain at three seven. Um, you know, I I can't I can't hate on it. I mean, you know, I don't I don't know how much shade you can throw there. Brock Purdy, like I said, three eight MVP maybe. Um, you know, I just want to point out that the same people who are not giving Brock Purdy his flowers because he's in Shanahan's system were probably the people who say that Shanahan needs to be fired because he's you know gotten complacent and he's overrated. And but now since Brock Purdy's doing something that they don't like. Kyle Shanahan's the system. You can plug any quarterback in there. And it's like, uh, you're not watching. You haven't been watching for a QB while. QB four, five overall. Woo! Shout out. Woo! Shout out to Brock Purdy. Dude, is there... Is eight, there eight and going be, before Purdy. Actually, that might be the most egregious pick I've seen oh, so far. Oh, I like it. I think I it's like it. too early for A-chain right there. You right? think so? Yeah. There's yeah. Just, it's weak winning upside. Yeah. It's league winning upside. Mostert's it's, 31, it's, it's baby. Weak winning upside. Look at Mostert's the best running back in the league right now, or a second best fantasy running back in the league right now. That's a chain spot coming up. You know, I don't know if he can hold carry that load. I don't. I'm not sure either. But I'll. I'll you know, you could take the risk. I don't even need him to carry the load. Just do what you do when you're there. I yeah right. Just stay healthy. And I need then, you to be the Jameer Gibbs. I guess of, if we could stay healthy. He would be in the first if, round. If here. you could get. If you've been doing him, that every game, if you can get a Montgomery who they can grind it when you need to grind it with them, and then you know what you can probably you can find that, and then throw. We just did a free agency video of running backs. Go check that out. Throw Achan in there. Uh, <laughs> Biggest mistakes of the season. A chain's name pronunciation. Oh, I just now I'm just I, I try to do it different every single time <laughs> just for the just for the Twitter audience. Um, but yeah, no, I, I he's that's. League winning upside, baby. And then how 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 soon are you ready to take that risk third round? You know, I don't know, but it seems like both of you guys would you would you take E. T. over him? Confidently. Confidently. Absolutely. All right. Go Tigers. Yeah. yeah. Dude, e, dude, ETN's special. What if what if the Dolphins just piss us all off this offseason and draft Trevion Henderson? What are we gonna do? Uh, I mean, we're, 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 that's not gonna be fun. <laughs> yeah. You know. That would be that would be not good. No, it wouldn't be. He, is he coming out? I don't know. We'll, we'll save it. Yeah. I think, All right, let's, I think he's coming out. Let's let's keep it moving here. Uh, we got Drake London to lead off 4-1. Mark Andrews, Laporta, so double up on the tight ends there. Devonta Smith, Puka Nakua, 4-6 there. Who, who is? I'm sorry. I can't see that far. I see Brock Bowers, 4-6. Brock Bowers at 4-6. T. Higgins at 4-7. Ayuk. Uh, then we got Malik Neighbors and Roma Dunze. And Michael Penix. We go three rookies in a row right there. And Nico Collins to... Wrap that round up. So um, people are not gonna like that. Not gonna like what? Michael Penix. Michael Penix. They hate him. Well, uh, Jaden Daniels goes one, two, you three. You cannot take Michael goes Penix. Three more listen, but but we'll here say, we'll save listen. it for the rookie talk. No, 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 we'll no, no, no Listen, bit. listen though. Here, here's what this is though. It's a know your league situation. Vengo, Big D, Washington. huge Washington Huskies fan. Yeah. So you know what? He probably is going to take Penix over Jaden Daniels. And you can sit there and bitch about it in the fucking comments, but that's a real thing that up. happens in real drafts. Yeah. So that it's it's a realistic situation there. And, you know, maybe he will come around and say, hey, I got to take Jaden Daniels because of the legs. And we're talking fantasy here and I got to swallow my pride. But there's a lot of people who, you know, especially you guys out there, like, you know, I'm in a bunch of leagues with Van Gogh. We don't play for anything less than 100, 150, 200. And he's probably still okay with taking Michael Penix. But in these yahoos are, are talking fantasy, like a lot of guys you listen to and are playing for free five or 10 bucks, 20 bucks, you know, sure, if that's your guy and you're a Huskies fan, then take Penix, baby. Like, who cares? It's 20 bucks. In a league that we're in with all these dynasty podcasts, we cannot get them to raise the buy-in. They, oh, every year we try to. Every yeah. year we try to get it up. Let's go at least 100, boys. Like, ah, I got I got 89 leagues. I can't. Yeah. Like cut out these eighty twenty dollar leagues and have like a few hundred and fifty dollar leagues. That's then I know that when you tell me the value of a player, you're putting your money, real money, where your mouth is. So, but know your league. Know that there's a, there's a Husky fan, there's a Clemson fan, there's this, there's that, and and that you can exploit that. You know, you can if we were in a draft right here, you could be like, hey, you want to get Michael Penix right here? I might right, be taking him on the next yeah. on the next go round here. So right. know your league. Always, always, always know your league. I mean, you keep a diary or you should at least be keeping a mental log of who likes what, who trades for what, who drafts for what, what how they put value on guys. So even if it goes against your value system, you know, you can put their pit their kind of value system up against them. Just know your league. All right. Anyway. Um, so I think Nico there at four twelve, Puka at four five. You taking Puka over Nico? 
Yeah, yeah Puka, absolutely. Puka over Nico? I think so. T. Higgins over Nico? Mm. Yep. Give me yeah. Nico. Yeah? Give me Nico. We are just we could take a little uncertainty out of things, right? I think I T. Mean, Higgins. What about Tank Dell? I, I think I think we could take T. Higgins and put him put him anywhere. Tank Dell's probably going to be Chase, fine. But, but so I, I think it. I think Nico Collins is basically T. Higgins. What so. if T. Higgins goes to the Chiefs next year? That'd be awesome. Then then it'd be great. Wheels up. Wheels up. But we could take a little uncertainty out and know that we're tied to Stroud uh, for a little while. Ayuk, which uncertainty in the air, or uh, Devonta Smith or T. Higgins. I would go Ayuk number one. Um, I think I'd go Devonta Smith two, and then T. Higgins would be three. I'm with it. Man, um, let me get all three of them. I, I don't know. That, I can't <laughs> you used to be a, able to get all three of them. Now you cannot. I can't put it. Well, T stayed up there. There's times you could get Ayuk. There's time, you know. There's times you could get Devonta Smith. He scored zero points in the first game of last year. He's just like, go south, go buy Devonta Smith as much as you can. You know, they don't like him because because AJ Brown's there and Jalen Hurts is a rush quarterback. But I mean, he just he gets it done. He's not. I like all those. But I don't know. I can't. I don't know that I can choose if I had to rank them. You know. That's why rankings are silly. They're in a tier together. You know, mm-hmm. get get one of them, you know, trade. And if they're all three still on the board, keep trying to move back a pick, you know, like figure yeah. out a way to get, figure out a way to trade up another pick to take two of them, you know, great players. Fellas, I, I kind of want to talk about the Nico Collins pick really quick. Sure. Uh, if you told me like a year ago, Nico Collins would be in the fourth round of a dynasty startup, dude, I would not believe that. There, there's mm-hmm. no way you could convince me. Mm-hmm. And like, I was low. I was low on Nico, and he's proved me wrong. Good for him. I'm a believer now. Like I'm in on Nico. I think he's a legit playmaker. I think he's he's here to stay. I don't think this is a fluke by any means, especially with Stroud. Um, but I do like DK Metcalf, and I do like DJ Moore, who went several picks later. They went in the fifth round. Nico went at the 412. Um, how do you guys feel? Would you prefer to have DK Metcalf, DJ Moore over Nico? What, what, what do you think? I think I'm sticking with with Nico there, uh, and I just want to point out that we've been – Nico's as another one we, you can thank us for because we <laughs> – I mean, late-round stabs, like we were taking all kind mm-hmm. of Nico. Like I probably hit, took him in the 12th, 13th, 14th round of every mock we did, just yep. hammering it because it's like, why not? Let's third year breakout, baby. Let's go. People forgot about that shit. Mm-hmm. So uh, – and, and Nico, you know, he probably could have gone sooner by someone who's really enamored, but he's way down the list and sleeper, and I was kind of keeping him on my back pocket. <laughs> I thought Puka Hood was available too, and I was about to take him, but then I was like, "Oh, J. Mike, of course, great, great pick, J. Mike." But uh, no, I think I'm I'm still good with with Nico there over DJ and, and yeah. DK. Um, I'll, I'll take I'll take Nico over DK. DJ Moore is is obviously just a stud and can put points up in a hurry. We're assuming that it's probably going to be Caleb Williams throwing it to him next year, so that that could be pretty uh, pretty good. Um, a <laughs> little older than those two guys, I think it's I think it, I think I'd. I think we're talking tiers here. I think those guys would be close, close to the same, to the same tier there. So as a cop out. So, but I think I'd be, I'm fine with, I'd probably take Nico over, over DJ Moore. I think you're resetting two years there maybe. Um, but maybe, maybe only one DJ Moore has got to be closer to 27 than he is 26 though. Yeah. Anyway, it doesn't really matter. DJ is going to be good for three, four more years. Um, we've seen this year that, you know, how, how, how quick and how, how devastating he can be going up against him. So Wide receiver seven. Oh, yeah. Put up a, a couple of huge games that, that really uh, will, will, will boost your rating there. Uh, so Jared Goff leads off the next round. Uh, then Kyle Pitts. Kyle Pitts, we can, you know, finally slip and fall and he can't get up. Maybe, you know, once Arthur Smith goes, he gots to get up so he can bounce on his feet. And He's been showing signs of life. I mean, it's not been great. It's not. It's still fucking Arthur fucking Smith. Yeah. Which at least the owner's like, okay, right, okay I'm, a con- I'm contemplating firing yeah. him now. If they had another, maybe they can get a bad loss, which I think they're playing They're playing the Green Bay Packers this week, maybe. They play, uh, Atlanta, they play Indianapolis. Uh, oh, Atlanta. Fan. They play. Uh, in in Atlanta. Hmm. Panthers, play the, Panthers play the Packers this week. So, yeah, Jared Goff, Kyle Pitts. Then it goes Jaden Daniels. I, I agree. I would swap Jaden Daniels with Penix right now because of the legs. Still have a lot of confidence in Penix, but just you, you got you to gotta take that leggy upside. Yeah, I, I should have taken – I mean, I'll, we can save it for the rookie mock. I wasn't thinking about the rookies. I would have definitely – I should have taken yeah, Jaden Daniels I was, over I would take Jared, Jared Goff. I would take yeah. Daniels over Goff for yeah, sure. I fucked that up. Then, you know, I think Metcalf value there is good. DJ Moore value, excellent. Uh, Kincaid value there, I think pretty solid. Tank Dell screaming up the charts, baby, like that. Tank Dell or JSN? Austin. Oh, I, I would have to go JSN still. Mm. I, I still have to 
sticking to them guns. Dude, I have to. Like JSN, we've. I'll tell you what, man. JSN is forever going to be on my good side after that touchdown catch. I was down by seven points in my fantasy league, and that got me like eight or nine points, whatever it was, and I advanced to the semis. So, nice. dude, I jumped. I jumped out of bed. I. Uh, yeah, man, I just want to shout out JSN. I know he listens to the pod every week. Dude, I love it. Sure. So. Uh, what, do you, what do you think? You going Tank Dell or you going JSN? Uh, I could go J. I'll go JSN. Okay. You going Tank? You got to. You yeah. got to go JSN. I I, I want to stick with JSN. It's just, you know, Tank Dell's here right now, baby. Are they both in the? Are they both still on the board in the mock the y'all are doing? 23 versus 24? Yeah, I think so. We gotta, I we think gotta, we're right around the spot where... We're going to do a mock with 23 and 24 rookies combined for your pleasure. A little two-rounder. It's pretty, been pretty fun. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I could still lean JSN, but it is that's real hard for even it to come out of my mouth. Um, but sometimes you got to be patient and look look down the road how good JSN can be. I mean, you're, you're seeing it with Tank Dell, how good he is. Um, but sorry, sorry, real hard coming out of your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> um, I need that clip where the guy's like, "I don't like men no more. <laughs> I, I don't like, like men." Yeah, <laughs> he does. He does still like men though, so that's the thing. Um, well, you can't just cut that shit off. <laughs> yeah, Michael Pittman. Michael Pittman. <laughs> I am delivered. For some reason, can't get any value anymore. He just keeps staying in the fifth round. It seems like. Michael Pittman should should be up in that fourth round, but you know you, you go through and talk about all those guys, but it seems like Pittman should be up there with Devonta Smith and Puka. No, yeah, yeah there's. I was just going to point that out, man. There's a handful of guys that I think Pittman should probably go over. Like, he, I think you have to take Pittman over Tank Dell. I think, mm. yeah, uh, I think you like have it? to take what Pittman over. I, I think I would take Pittman over DK Metcalf. To be honest with you, um, I would go Pittman over Kyle Pitts. Uh, the, there, there were a handful of players, man. He, T. Like Higgins, it. like I gotta be honest, I Pittman. would rather Michael Pitt. I really Pittman. would rather Michael right, Pitt Jr. Guys. Yeah, I was with you till there. <laughs> Go Tigers! And um, yeah, man, this is. Uh, I didn't realize how far Michael Pittman fell. He, he, I, I mean, this is coming from a Colts fan. Like I was not high on Michael Pittman coming into the season. I think most people would agree with me on that, just based off the situation. Damn, dude, he has turned into one of the best ROIs all all year long. Yeah, and, and I want to touch on something you said, D, uh, Pittman over DK. I think we were having that conversation off the air at some point, and it was like, you know, DK is a little bit of a head case. You know, you don't know when he's going to mentally take himself mm-hmm. out of a fucking game, basically. And with Michael Pittman, it just seems like smooth sailing. Just mean, it seems like cool, calm, collect, level-headed. Like, you never see any of that from him, right? It feels like he has eight catches, 70 yards at minimum. And then, you know, maybe he's having even more production or a touchdown. Like Michael Pittman Jr. just feels like one of the most – he's just as safe as it gets this season. Yeah, I would I would tend to agree. Uh, then we get Josh Jacobs, Jordan Addison, and Saquon Barkley. I like, I like this little running back section here where we're at. Fifth round, Jacobs and Barkley. Pretty, pretty freaking solid. Jacobs still young. 25 yeah, still so young and you know i think we've seen glimpses of what saquon can be in, in this season he's just over there with tommy devito and a, and a you know mediocre at best team um shit box team at least he's still healthy that's right. the main thing well, that's what you we know, need out of saquon God. to get out of this right out of just the get season out of the season healthy um you know rough game against the saints giants got got uh got beat up pretty good against the saints good d uh, but yeah, I like that. I like that Saquon grab there at five twelve. Damn near six six round Saquon. That's uh, that's a nice pickup yeah. there by Mister Abbott. Yeah, I was happy with it. Uh, it's funny because this draft was what like around a week ago, fellas, and you know here we are. How do you guys feel about James Cook over Saquon Barkley in Dynasty? Yeah, that people are gonna be mad where, about where James Cook went in this draft for mm-hmm. sure. Uh, this and I think it's been longer than a week. These these take a couple of weeks. I feel like yeah. Well, it takes it takes about a week to do it, and then you know we got to schedule the the show. Right. So it, you're probably missing two games worth of stuff. Like I don't think Justin Herbert was on IR when they took him right there. No. Um. Obviously, Trevor hadn't played this terrible game when they took him there. So, um, where were we? Uh, uh, we were talking Saquon Saquon and, and James and, and James, Cook, James, right. Cook. James Cook, great question, uh, because he's skyrocketing. I mean, he just had a, a huge game on the, the game yep. of the week, so probably most people were watching that mm-hmm. game, and a big matchup, and they just smoked the Cowboys. Like, 
like you, they were ready to just crown the Cowboys like Super Bowl favorites and give Dak the MVP, and then all of a sudden the Bills just ran it down their throats mm -hmm. for the whole time. And Cook looked unstoppable and can also catch the ball really yeah. well. So, you know, yep. I, the sizists well, are going to have to eat this one. Well, we kind of we kind of talked about Cook last week a little bit, um, or maybe that was two weeks ago. I think it was last week. Um, just about, you know, it's it's never been about Cook's uh, ability. ability. It's been the Bill's usage. usage. Um, and all of a sudden you get a game like this. And then, you know, since Brady has taken over, I think the stat was, you know, over 31 percent target share um, for him. And if even if he's just going to get that and still have 10, 12, 15 carries, we're OK with that. You know, he needs to be, you know, just featured in the offense. And then if he's going to get more than 15 carries like. Let's go. Um, you know, that offensive line played really well. Dallas is, seems to be, you know, Bugaboo does seem to be stopping the run. Um, and it seemed like, you know, the Bills had a good plan coming in that we're just going to, you know, run it down them and out physical them. Um, and that's what they did. And, and we'll, it'll be remains to be seen if this usage will keep up. But since Brady has taken over, Joe Brady, that is for them. Um, you know, we've seen a nice market share catching wise from from James Cook. And then, you know, now if we're going to see. Hey, yeah, maybe we're still not getting all those all that goal line opportunity because Josh Allen's going to get some of that. They've put Latavius Murray in in this game uh, to do that. Still, uh, Lenny's I think lurking around somewhere uh, in the depths of the stadium. So, but yeah, I mean, Cook Cooks probably needs to be up closer to to Jacobs and Pittman or or uh, Jacobs and, and Saquon rather. I think if you offered somebody who's been holding Saquon for a while, James Cook, I think they would probably take it. I don't there's, know what uh, I do that. What do y'all think? It's there's a few guys that are sticking out to me still. Like, like I know we completed this like whatever a week, two weeks ago. I mean, man, talk about these players' values just fluctuating so much. Like Trey McBride, I thought went wildly late, right. like yeah. as of today, right? Mm -hmm. Rashi Rice, I think went extremely late at the seven. Uh, what is that seven seven? And then again, like James Cook is another one that sticks out. It's just like man, these guys today in today's world they would they wouldn't fall you know the, or sorry they the, yeah they wouldn't last that long right um but so you, where, jason your high, question how high are we taking yeah. james cook god it almost feels i think it I'm almost feels si Jacob's silly over cook just because i feel like there's going to be workhorse like numbers and i know when we've seen him put up a ton of rb1 basically since he's been in the league so mm -hmm. i feel okay about that kind of you know moving forward um, cause we just don't know that, that we've got a small sample, uh, of, of the usage of cook being there, but it's really close, close than it's certainly ever been. And it's neck and neck. Uh, I think maybe that's I think a slight overreaction. What do you think, Austin? I think the production between even like Saquon Jacobs and cook will be relatively similar. I think the value for James cook is, is probably a little overvalued at this point. Um, I'm not saying he's he's Fair a screaming enough. sell high. I'm not saying that he's a screaming sell high, but it's uh, again, this is probably the highest we've ever seen his value. Right? He yeah. just dropped 36 plus fantasy points on you know the biggest stage of the year. Yeah, he's, so, he's been on a tear though. I mean, he's gotten mm -hmm. uh, let's see here it was the last five weeks were 12 points, 19.2, 16, 25, 36. You know, mm -hmm. and he's not even five three, <laughs> uh, and, and averaging a ridiculous yards per carry. And then getting a, a a bunch of targets, you know, two, four, seven, five, three. I mean, at this point, you got to take him over Tony Pollard, no questions asked. Yeah. Yep. Oh yeah. I think I think the only reason that that you know Josh Jacobs stays in the conversation is because Cook's twenty four and Josh Jacobs twenty five. You know what I mean? Like Josh Jacobs only one year older than Cook. Right. Feels like he's a lot older than yeah. Cook. Saquon's twenty seven. Right. So I could I could he might take, be still twenty six, but gonna be. 27. I could take the I could take a little bit of youth with James Cook. Over Saquon, but I, I can't be mad. You want to take Jacobs over Cook? Yeah, I think I think it's a good call on. You know, let's we'll run through a couple more rounds real quick, and then let's do a quick ch talk about your roster construction, and then we'll get out of here. Um, so the next round is Debo, Diggs, Bryce Young, Zay Flowers, Tony Pollard, Trey McBride, uh, Javante Williams, George Kittle, Keon Coleman, I believe six nine is yep. um, Marquise Brown. Uh, and then Ibuka. Ibuka at 6'11". 6'12 is Jordan Love. Going into the next round, we got Chris Godwin. Uh, then we're, we're taking another rookie at 7'2". We got Travion Henderson. Uh, then we got Kyron Williams, Rashad White, uh, Deontay Johnson, George Pickens, Rashi Rice, 
James Cook, Dallas Goddard, Josh Downs, Ramondre Stevenson, Kirk Cousins, and then you hit that turn uh, that you were foreshadowing to, I think, a little bit with, you know, you went Kelsey there, and then the next round you went, you know, um, Cooper Cup. So you got some some older guys there. You got Mike Evans at 111 and 10-1. Uh, before we get into that real quick, you know, I think you mentioned R- Rashi Rice. And Cook obviously need to be higher here. Kyron, I think we should talk about we Kyron. We can talk about Kyron. Mm-hmm. I want to hit George Pickens real quick because, you know, I think the people who hated George Pickens are loving life right now. I think this comes back to something that uh, I've started to pick up a little heavier on the last two years. It's, it's, it's to me, when we're evaluating prospects and we're about, because I think this is important getting into this again, like we kind of knew there was a chance that George Pickens could be a little bit of a shithade. And I think I think now it's just kind of I, I don't think know it's, that it was that he's a shithade. I think it was it's just, just that he's a little bit of a head case. I think like, he sh- it's showing up right now that he's yeah. a shithade. Like it's not going Selfish. great. Selfish. It's not going great right now. He's not going to do anything to put himself out there. We know his ability to block is off the fucking charts. We know his ability to do different, you know, to be physical and be a really good receiver. I think it's off the charts. I think I think he'd be a really good player. Uh, but the fact that I think there's a, a shred of of that you thought coming into it, like, ah, man, we, we, I'm going to have to start deducting more points for if I if I can figure out through reading and articles and videos that 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 the player that we're evaluating is a little bit of a of a of a jerk uh, that and and seemingly could have some selfishness to him that I might have to knock him down a little bit and it might not be popular off the rip, but I mean. George Pickens as a player is, is I think it's I think his ability is through the roof. What's going to probably hold him back is I don't know how great he wants to be. He he just wants the situation to be awesome and everything to be kind of handed to him and be in front of him. He wants and, everything to be great for him, right. not be great for right the team. The, the, the fact that you're like there's an interception on the on the field and and you're not you're basically the guy's running like right past you, right next to you. You're not making the attempt to tackle him because you didn't that, get the ball thrown your way. Well, or it just got picked and you're mad at at Mitchell. Um, and then you're not blocking for Jalen Warren down in the red zone there because you don't want to get hurt. And listen, I understand there's some validity to that. You, maybe your season isn't going the way you want it to, so you don't want to get hurt. But, I mean, dude, what the fuck are you doing? Yeah, and if, uh, if, you know, if Mike Tomlin and the Steelers can't deal with your head, pers- then you must be real fucking bad precisely. if they're not figuring it out because they and, can work with them. Boys. And you have Deontay Johnson right there who's had similar things. So I think you just got you got bad leading the bad here. He doesn't have a – like Allen Robinson I thought could be that presence – for him, but it's it's just it, it's too old it's, to, and not relevant for Pickens to even it's care not, at this point. You know, it's again, it's not the ability of a lot of these guys. It's the want to and the attitude and the approach, and I think that's what's going to inhibit George Pickens from being great. Um, so anyway, uh, we can certainly. I would I would love to talk about Rashad White, and then we can hit a little old Kyron, and then you know, for the most part, I think we could. You know, any, any other values in here that you saw that you liked, we can hit and and maybe just talk a quick bit about of a roster construction because we're running a little long here. Um, Rashad White moving into next year. Uh, for me, coming into this year, I thought this was a possibility of him being really good this year, but I was worried about next year, about them bringing somebody else in and him not having all the volume next year because there's nobody really in his way. It's starting to look like, like, why would you really bring in anybody else of note uh, because he, he is playing really well. The Bucks are playing way better than expected. Obviously, uh, Evans needs the contract, but you know y- your, your O-line got some injuries through it, um, and, and you could bolster that up a little bit. Hell, even if you go back to the well with Baker this, this next year, you know I, I think Rashad White is, has certainly earned the starting role next year. Uh, and and you know maybe it won't be quite as much as it is this year, but I mean, we talk about it all the time, who's is really? You know, this is incredible what he's got going on. So, what are your thoughts on, on Rashad White moving forward? You know, I was listening to a podcast earlier today and uh, some people were, they were advocating for selling him high. I got to tell you what, man, I don't know how much higher his value could go, but at the end of the day, like he's just been awesome. He's a player that, you know, I don't think the Bucks are by any means going to move on from. Like he's still going to be under contract for another two years at minimum in Tampa Bay. Um I liked everything I saw from him out of Arizona, you know, and here we are, man. It, it, this is this is the best case scenario. So a lot of times I think it's wise to just simply hold and, and you know, win with these valuable assets. I, I've always liked Rashad and it's great to see him thrive and just exceed expectations. Yeah, I, I think I think both of these guys that we're going to talk Rashad and Kyron, I mean, I, you know, 
I think you could you could certainly make the case for selling high for them. I'm not, I wouldn't really begrudge you for it, but if you have anywhere near a competitive team, um, I think both of those guys can help you win championships in the next year because they're both really good. Rashad White always has been an awesome pass catcher. I just wasn't sure about him between the tackles. It, it, you know, it can be good, it can be okay, but you know they're feeding him the volume. Even if it goes, the volume goes down a little bit, I think it's this pass uh volume will, will either stay the same will probably stay the same maybe if it goes down a hair but he's freaking wa- running back five right now i mean just look at these last s- oh it's been 10 outrageous. games outrageous 16 18 28 18 scoring 18, touchdowns 13 20 21 all different kind 22. of 22 what right. a wild run what like a- i traded him and a second round pick for travis Etienne, and i thought i was crushing it but i think he's he's been better yeah like I'd probably be in a better position if I had Rashad White right now. Jesus, yeah. I don't. I don't feel that way. Like from a dynasty standpoint, but from a points on the board standpoint, right? I mean, and and you know what you just did and the value that you just got. You know, if we're looking at this board right now, that that checks out. Um, you know, you got you got the better end of that deal as far as we're looking at value right now. But Rashad White in your lineup right now every week is it might be carrying you to a championship. And Et's been eh, okay here, but like there was a middle of the season where Et was. Oh, the, begin, the whole the, the whole first half. I feel like I feel like it's been it's been kind of slowing down. So Kyron Williams, kind of same question. I think you know I think you could sell high for sure, and I think there's a lot of people who are just you know he's just mid and he's not going to get all this volume. And you know I just look around and I say why not? Like why why are, why are the Rams going to do that much different? Even if they take a little bit away from him, you know he was great against Baltimore two weeks ago, and that's an elite defense. He he was carving them boys up. I think. He's everything the Rams need him to be. Uh, and I just don't know why they would go and, and just completely, sh- you know, I feel like if I think any running back in the league outside of a few guys could get it at this point. So, you know, what are we what are we even really talking about? Like, I'm not surprised if half of the running backs in the league get another guy in their backfield with them. And I just feel like Kyron's done everything he needs to do to go into next season as the very least the one A. Do you think he can stay healthy at his size and do what he's doing long term? Uh Sure. Austin. Yeah. Yeah, I do, man. Um, I, I don't necessarily know if he'll ever have that, you know, anything remotely close to like Derrick Henry type of volume. But uh, if they continue to use him and scheme up, you know, just ideal plays for his size and, and the situation, I believe that, you know, he's going to have a bright future in the league. I, you know, he, he just looks incredible. Like he, he looks Ford, so he's missed good. Five games. It's crazy. Yeah, he looks so good, man. He really does. Uh, Casey, I think you nailed a, a few of these picks here. I really, really like that you went from the you know Rome to Jaden Daniels. And then I, I love the next two picks by you with, with Kyron. And then right after, I think this might be one of the better values we've seen in, in this entire draft, is Cole Komet mm. in tight end premium at practically what the ninth round almost. Yeah. I mean, dude, Cole Cole Komet is someone that, you know, he needs he needs a shout out. He yeah. needs to be talked about more because he's just he's he's awesome, dude. I think he's already low key a superstar. Yeah, the, my thoughts were is you know we're, we're we we waited around for a tight end, which I I, I would I'd prefer to get McBride, which you know maybe where the Jaden Daniels pick was, I, sh- I should have grabbed should have grabbed him, but I was hoping maybe he'd make it one more, but he didn't, and I got to get used to not being able to get McBride in the tenth round anymore. But <laughs> Cole Komet was in tight end premium is right up there with the same amount of points as DK Metcalf, and and we're we're getting him at eight ten here, and you know even let's say they they do keep Justin Fields, then everything around Justin Fields improves, uh, you know fundament ideally that's why you that's why you be keep Justin Fields because hey we're gonna build on this so O line improves. Maybe, you know, defense even gets even better, which they've been playing great. Everything, all the situation, they should just be collecting assets at this point. Everything gets better, and Justin Fields already loves Komet. Or they draft Caleb Williams, and Caleb Williams is throwing to Komet. It seems like we're not losing either way here. So I I, I love that pick. Obviously, I made it. So, yes, of course, (laughs) I like it. All right. Is there any other values that you really liked on this pick before we hit a quick roster construction? We're going way too long here. Jason, I loved I loved the Braylon Allen pick. I'm I'm a big fan of Braylon Allen. I think he's I think he's going to be a baller, man. I think he's going to be a good player. Uh, wow, Derek Henry went that late. When is that? A uh, ten twelve, mm-hmm. dude. That's I mean that's I don't know if that's appropriate. Maybe it is, but I don't. I, I feel like that's myself. not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I'm saying. Some I feel like at that point, like he, why not, dude? Some people are saying he's done. <clears throat> I've watched a lot of his games because I had him on like one of my higher dollar leagues and the one that's like higher than the rest. And so I've been 
and I want to see what's up with Levis and stuff. And like, I, yeah. don't, I don't think he's done. Like that old line isn't great. Levis isn't playing great. Like what are the, what are they supposed to do? And, and you know, he still looks like he has it and he caught a couple extra balls and you normally see like a 10th round Eric Henry. I mean, fuck. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, uh, like Troy that. Franklin in the mid 12th. Oh, that's Damn, ridiculous. Dude. That doesn't even make sense. Damn. I think that's just people not knowing about the rookies. And, yeah. and I don't think that's, that's, that's not real. I like this Jaden uh, yeah. Reed in the 10th. At ten two, I think I was. Yeah, love Jaden Reed. That's pretty strong. Tell me, tell me about what you were thinking about this roster construction before we get out of here, uh, Austin. Yeah, I was just focused on win now. You know, I took a lot of guys like Debo, Saquon, um, Ken Walker, Christian McCaffrey was probably one of the more polarizing picks I had at the very end of the second. Like mm. in reality, if if this was an actual real draft, I, I you know, I was very close. I probably would have taken Jameer Gibbs to be completely transparent with you guys. I probably would have, um, but some of the older assets that I have that would help me win now guys like, you know, Travis Kelsey, or even, you know, of course a healthy Kirk cousins. Uh, and I, I do see him coming back. Cooper cup, Terry McLaurin, who yes, his, his stock is down. Mike Evans, Joe Mixon, Keenan Allen. I mean, my team screams win now, you know, figure it out later. So yeah, uh, I would be I would be cool. Hey, if you get a ring, you get a ring, man. Rings last forever. But um, this was this was a more aggressive win now type of approach. What about you? Um, so I, I I've been taking the approach that I that I feel the most comfortable with in dynasty, kind of moving forward, and and the approach that you know that that I've had recently the most success with. Um, and it's it's basically like. I'm going to take a lot of players that are just, I'm going youth and a lot of rookies and I'll grab a couple other guys that I think are pretty good values in the draft, but I'm not going to draft anybody who's super old for the most part. And, you know, basically if we're not good the first year, that's okay. That's kind of what I'm ba banking on to then get another set of really good draft picks coming into here. So um, I got two or three teams right now that I've built this way and just coming into this second year or third year with these teams, I got an absolute dump truck of a team. Um, that I made the playoffs with a, with a, a, a decent amount of them, and the ones that I didn't, I, I missed because of some injuries. And and you know, I got I got pretty good picks, and then another stack of picks because what kind of the way that I drafted was obviously I you know I took Caleb Williams early, and then um, at four ten I took um, Roma Dunze, so I got another young wide receiver. I got Kyler in there who's still young and coming back. Now I did take JT. And he's a workhorse RB. So if it goes well for me this year, I'm okay. But if not, I feel like I can get good value for JT down the road here because somebody's going to need a workhorse running back, and there's not that many of them. He signed up to the Colts. We saw him starting to come on um, there after he was back. Uh, and then, unfortunately, had another little injury there. But uh, I think he's going to be just fine. And when he's putting up 20 points a game, if it's not helping me out, somebody else is going to pay me a King's Ransom for him uh, who wants to win this year. So I got Rome, and then I got Jaden Daniels. Then I got Marquise Brown in there, who's still pretty young and has just had a bad stretch down the back half because he hasn't been healthy. And then we got Kyron, who's very young at the running back position, who I think at worst case scenario, I can get a first four if I have to. That's kind of what I was thinking when I took him. Uh, then I took Cole Komet. And then I did take Sam Howell here, which, you know, kind of go either way. Maybe he starts next year, maybe he doesn't, but he's still, you know, a QB who, who could really return on dividends. I wanted to be QB heavy, QB rich. Then I went right back to Pat Fryermuth because I thought it was good value. Both Komet and him still super young. This is tight end premium. Then I got Burks, who's super young, who injured this year. And I think if Levis stays around, I think it's awesome for Burks because he can get vertical down the field for you. And and he was 11th round Burks. I'll take it. Um, I was it's either him or Jamison Williams. Jamison Williams won the next pick. So you're getting two, you know, prospects that could really splash. Then I took Jacoby Myers, who you know if things go well. That's a third wide receiver flex play for me. That's going to be awesome. If not, somebody needs Jacoby Myers and I can get something for him. And then I took three more rookies. Jatavian, Jatavian Sanders. Sanders, dude. I love that pick. I, I took Jatavian Sanders, Blake Corum, and Devin Neal to basically end this draft. And Sanders is basically another young tight end to add to this because like I stated before, Cole Komet right now in tight end premium, just 1.5, is basically putting up the same points as DK Metcalf. So that's I'm getting half the rounds later uh, of DK Metcalf as Cole Komet. Pratt Fryermuth, one game back with Kenny Pickett, crushed. Obviously, the whole offense is fault that can't do anything. And we could talk all the shit we want about Kenny Pickett, but the whole offense can't do shit without Kenny Pickett out there. I'm not saying he's awesome. I'm not saying he's great. 
I'm just saying he can he can at least facilitate some semblance of an offense. Uh, one game without their OC and Pat Fryermuth back and Pat Fryermuth crushed, which he did most of last year. Um, and then I get the and Sanders to go with that. So now I got three tight ends that I feel really good about. Somebody in this league is probably going to want a tight end. If not, I, I, I would love to be able to start two tight ends. This is a deeper, deeper uh, start team. Uh, and then I took Corum and Neil as running backs who if they hit, they hit. They don't, they don't. But those are my running backs. I basically have no other running backs on the team besides JT and Kyron Williams. Both guys that I feel like I can get really good value for. If my team ends up being good this year, those guys will really help me. If not, I can get great value for them. But what I can do now is, is I'm I'm super young. I'm super fluid. I can sell guys all over the place. Everybody's going to want any of these young guys that break out. They're going to be all over them. I can stack picks up for, and if Corum hits, that's another first round pick I could probably stack up. If Neil hits, that's another first or second round or, or multiple things I could stack up. So I can go into year two with... Even if my if my team the plan is the team not to be good, so I'm going to have either picks one through four to start off with. So I'm going to get a stud uh, in there, and then I'm going to probably try to end up with multiple seconds and multiple firsts, and then we're going to come in with a super young roster. We're going to sell off some pieces, and then once we get into a position where we're where it's time to win and we feel like we're pretty good, we still have a bunch of young assets. So now I can go overpay a little bit for whatever running back I need at that time or whatever wide receiver I need at that time. And then I can acquire those assets when it's time to go ahead and dominate the league for four or five years in a row. So that's been kind of my approach recently with startups and how I've been, uh, you know, dealing with them and and going with them. And I've had really good success. You just have to be a little patient. You just have to uh, almost the exact opposite of what you did, Austin. Like, you know, not that I, I think the easiest time to win a league is probably year one. Um, so, you know, there is absolutely nothing wrong with getting in there, getting the money. Hey, we're fucking paid up now for years and years to come. We can we can suck for a year or two and rebuild uh, and still have a few assets in there. And, and, you know, even if if you came in and won this thing, you probably you still can sell off some players and, and, and rebuild a little bit. So there's not anything wrong with that. I'm just saying what I've had a lot of success with is, you know, it's sort of like a productive struggle, I would I would assume would be the the kind of the term for it. But you have to be willing to suck for a little bit and do a lot of trading to, right. to really make this work. <laughs> right. The best and that it can. I think it can work without it. But um, so. Yeah. And I'm, I'm I, I like both of those strategies. I mean, I can't argue with any of the picks that you made, Austin, and, and building a team that way. I mean, to get to get those guys, Evans and Keenan, you could swap where you took those guys even, and, and it'd be fine, you know? I mean, but, but and, and Cooper Cup and Terry McLaurin, I mean, Jesus Christ, I don't want to play you, you know what I'm saying? Um, no, definitely not. I'm, I'm down on you like, whipping my ass the first year. Right, and, I, and, and there's something for taking the guy you know is good. And, and in startups, I, I kind of steer away from rookies for the most part. Mm-hmm. I, you know, I took two that I really like when I thought the value was pretty good. <clears throat> I know a lot of people don't like Braylon Allen. I don't, I don't know why they're already out on Braylon Allen. I, everybody everybody already knows, knows everything. Everything so yeah. so so quickly. I'm like, how do y'all boys know? Like, we got a long way to go before you ever have to make a rookie pick. How do you already know exactly who's good and who's bad? You you don't is right. what I'm trying to say. But what I, I like to do is I I like I like to have both worlds. You know, I don't I want to win now, but I also don't I want some youth. So when I'm going through, I'm trying to I'm trying to do both of those things. And in Mox, it's tough to. Really go with the strategy because I, I, sometimes I don't want to take the guy that I want to take because I mm-hmm. want to see how far he falls and and I, and you tr- you try things out, um, but you know like I never go four rounds without a quarterback you know and then I'm stuck with Goff and Love and I thought maybe I could get Purdy at some point um, but you know J Mike swooped him up with it as his third pick third <laughs> quarterback in a row. <clears throat> I love. There's nothing wrong with getting some some young wide receivers. I like to get one good back. You know, Casey kind of did that thing. I got Bijan up there at the top. Have no no worries about him other than Arthur Smith. But that's that that's got to be coming to a close soon. So if you can go get some Bijan at a discount, continue to keep trying to do that. See, uh, and then I mean, Braylon was my second co- running back. I feel like he he has workhorse potential for sure. Uh, let me show the second round or the second part of this draft here. Uh, and then I, you know, I missed out on some tight ends, so I hammered a few there. Look at that likely pick at the end. I need to get some likely in because he's hot right now, and he played incredible, and he is he's athletic, and Lamar loves him, and they seem like they got something going on. And and 
and I lost a game because of uh, like I lost going against Kenneth Walker, Isaiah Likely, and Terry McLaurin. Those three guys single hand, like triple handedly, bit, beat me this past week. And I had the best team in the league. I had two hundred po- more points than the next closest guy, um, and still didn't have a buy because that's how brutal fantasy football is. But Mark Andrews is going to get healthy at some point. He's going to come back, and that's going to put doubt and fear in people's minds for Isaiah Likely. And that is when you go buy Isaiah Likely because. Who's to say it couldn't be two tight ends crushing for them? Because Lamar and them has has developed a chemistry, and and Lamar is playing incredible. Oh, awesome! He's playing incredible right now. Like the throws and the decisions. It's not always he's making. showing up in your fantasy lineup. And that's another point. Like go buy Lamar Jackson. Like, he was a big buy for us in the off season. Big must buy. And you you got to go try and get more because he could have he could be the number one overall scoring player. Like the way he's playing, but. They're running the ball pretty good. There's a lot of short rushing touchdowns by the running backs. You know, I'm trying to go by Lamar because he is playing incredible football right now. But yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't really have much more on roster construction in a mock. Just, just yep. mock it up, try things, see what you like, see what you didn't like. We don't have to make these picks tomorrow. You know what I mean? This is a mock. We're having, we're having fun. We're, we're mocking it up so we don't fuck it up. You know, have yep. some fun. Try it out. Yeah, you gotta wear, you gotta wear protection. Come on, so you don't have a. a so you gotta. Safe sex is great sex. Yeah, so that's why you, you got to lock it up. You, you got to wear a latex. You don't want that latex that, yeah. oh, I think I'm latex. Right. And so that, you know, you don't fuck up. You don't fuck your life up. You know, you just keep until you find the one. Then you can take that thing off <laughs> and just, you know, <laughs> win some money. And then never look back again. But, you know, until <laughs> then, you got to. <laughs> All right, let's get the hell out of here. Get the FF out of here. Austin, we appreciate you. Make sure you follow Austin at Austin Abbott FF. Two B's, two T's. Two F's. You got anything to say before we get out of here, Austin? Dude, can I shout out one player real quick? Oh, as many as you want. Go ahead. Floor is yours. Uh, the player that you drafted in the 15th round, for everybody listening, pay attention. Devin Neal, the running back for Kansas. He had over 3,000 rushing yards in three seasons, 35 touchdowns in 36 career games. All I want to say real quick about Devin Neal, he has great size, 5'11", 210 pounds. He was a true collegiate workhorse running back. Uh, he had early production, and he ended up having great college production. Mm. So I, I just want to shout him out, just someone to keep on your radar. For you to land him in the 15th round here, I mean, you could look like an absolute genius next year he if is. he hits. And if he doesn't, guess what? You drafted him in the 15th, yeah. who cares? He is so much fun to watch. So just just shout out to uh, Devin Neal, some somebody that uh, he's kind of one of my favorite Darthers, to be honest with you. He's he's really grown on me. So save that, bring it back for the next show that we're about to do, which is R- when R- to R- take rookies in a startup. So be sure you like, subscribe, and all that jazz, so you get the notification right to your little fingertips when we drop that next show, uh, which will probably be. The day after Christmas? I'm not trying to drop a show on Christmas. Y'all need to hang out with the fans. You know, go, go tell someone you love them. Yeah. Uh, get off YouTube for a day. But uh, I know you won't. Or if you, you know, celebrate Hanukkah, just hang out. Maybe you want to watch a YouTube. Yeah. Maybe, yeah. Or Fair Kwanzaa. Hey, yeah. Merry Christmas, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa. Yeah. All right. We'll catch you next time. Beer cans. Oh, Jesus. Jason's wife out of town. We can throw beer cans. <laughs> Peace. <laughs> <laughs>